Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I come to the floor today with a heavy heart. I see Donald Trump's administration declaring war on my hometown of Portland, Oregon. After failing the American people in the coronavirus, in the face of six months of not just weak leadership, but virtually no leadership at all, there are tens of thousands of people dying unnecessarily. Uh, it's hard to focus on the unprecedented assault on our environmental protections that they have unraveled. But now, they're declaring war on America's cities, sending in an occupying force drawn from Homeland Security, uh, particularly the Custom and Border Patrol, uh, ostensibly to protect monuments and statues. What about protecting the American people and their constitutional right to protest? Don't attack our people with tear gas without warning. Seriously injuring people, exercising their right to protest. Uh, things that people can see uh, on video uh, with their own eyes. Watching the gentleman hit with a projectile requiring serious uh, surgery, uh, inflicting facial injuries, um, a, a person just asking what was going on, having officers assault him breaking his hand. They can't be that inept. It must be purposeful, taking a very challenging situation in my hometown and making it worse. But make no mistake, this isn't just about Portland, Oregon. We watched what they did in Lafayette Park across from the White House, again, assaulting innocent protesters in order to have a photo app for the President of the United States. There's indications that they're moving to Chicago, uh, Atlanta, C uh, Kansas City, Seattle. Who's going to be less? Talking about the challenges that have been taken in Philadelphia with a reforming district attorney, later Krasner, and somehow holding him up as an example of breakdown in law and order, an assault on the American public. Portland, Oregon is not out of control. To be sure, there are some people who have strong feelings, and there are some who have done things that are inappropriate and unlawful. But that is the challenge of our local officials and our state officials to manage it. Not having somebody unwelcome, uninvited, and unprepared coming in to take this difficult situation and make it worse. I deeply appreciate the congressional leadership, uh, Chairman of Armed Services, and uh, Adam Smith, the Judiciary Committee, Jerry Nadler, Benny Thompson, Homeland Security, who have decried this activity. It is important that we deal with Trump's weaponizing law enforcement for his own agenda, not driven by people's needs, but by his poll numbers and becoming an occupying force in our community and, sadly, I think, elsewhere. We need to move forward with oversight hearings dealing with what they're doing. We want to pursue legislative initiatives, spending limitations, oversight hearings. This needs to be front and center at a time when we have so much to deal with. People cannot ignore what is happening in Portland and what may coming to their city. With the administration becoming more hysterical in their charges leading up to the election and falling poll numbers, uh, there is no community that is safe from this interference. And we must do all we can to not just spotlight, but push back. Our democratic process and our constitutional rights are literally at risk. And you can see it in terms of what's been happening in Portland, Oregon.